Alrighty boys, how are we? Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to do some nice looking 3D text for your banners and stuff on Twitter, whatever the fuck you want to use it for really. Uh, it's been pretty heavily requested so I thought I'd just quickly run through it. It's pretty simple but I know a lot of people don't know how to do it. First off, you want Cinema 4D open. I'm using R19, it doesn't really matter which one you use, it's going to be the same for all of them. But um, you want to start off by going MoGraph and then mo text and it will literally just bring your text up on the screen like this uh, just click on the text up here and then go to object and that's where you can edit it for this example I'm going to be using suns because I'm going to be making a header for him um, now I normally use a render engine called octane to get better quality from my text it's pretty pricey though so not a lot of people aren't going to use it so I just basically removed the uh, I'm not going to be using octane for this tutorial um, so now that we have our text and we've got the name here down here you can see font, I'm basically just going to go to that and I'm going to pick a font, for this one I'm going to be using Marturic, this one is really nice, I'm a huge fan of this font to be honest. Uh, I'm going to go into the settings here, I'm just going to remove that and that. Uh, let's just keep it on, render it on standard, output 1920 by 1080 uh, I normally for headers do 3000 by 1000 so I can position the text how I want So just for the sake of the tutorial I'm going to do that uh, 3000 by 1000, make sure you've got it set to pixels And when you go to save, make sure you've got alpha channel ticked And this is set to PNG And you just basically see your output there uh, Anti-aliasing, this will normally be automatically set to geometry. I set it to best so I can increase it to about 8 times 8 and the minimum of 4x4. Four four. Uh, this might be a little bit rough on your CPU depending on what one you have, but with mine it's super quick. It really shouldn't be that rough on your computer. Um, now I'm going to go to effect and I'm going to go to global illumination. I, I haven't used this in a long time. Uh, by the way, I normally don't need to do worry about this just simply because I'm using um, uh, my Octane render engine most of the time. But, and then I'm going to go to ambient occlusion as well, and I'm just going to set them, just, I'm just going to leave them how they are really. Um, and now I'm going to close this, and I've got a material here already made to make one. You can just double click, and then double click on the actual material itself, and just sort of mess around with it, get the colours however you want sort of thing. But um, just for this one, I'm going to use those two colours there. Might make this one a little bit more red, and drop it here a bit as well. Now I'm going to click on this layer here and I'm going to select C and I'm going to basically open them up. Now I'm going to do Control C, Control V to copy and paste it, or V. Now I'm going to left click on this S here and the shift click this Z here and that selects those top four pieces of text. And now I'm going to go to caps and I'm going to go to fill a cap. And I'm going to drop the radius all the way to zero and then bring it back up because sometimes it can mess with decimals and stuff and I just can't be screwed. I can't be stuff typing it really so I'm just going to set it to about 2 and grab this blue arrow and just sort of drag it back just the tiniest bit. Now with this here what this allows me to do is I can basically just set a colour to each individual letter. So if I was to set blue onto here it only affects the outline and I'll just do it for every second letter there and then just every second letter I'll do a different colour as well just like that. Bam, simple. And I'll do the opposite for this one. So I got blue for S, I'll do blue for U instead, and then blue for Z, and then just swap them around. Uh, this isn't normally what I would do, just, but for the sake of the tutorial, just so I can show you guys the ins and outs of text, I'm just going to do this for now. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select them all. I'm just going to control click all of them. I'm going to go to object and here where it says depth I'm going to increase it to about 100 just for the sake of this particular header it's not always going to be 100 you can sort of mess around with it but yeah now I'm going to click off them and minimize each one so it's just like that now I'm going to left click and then control left click and I'm going to do alt G what that does is group them into a null uh, I don't particularly know what null means but um, it's basically just a group so if I hide it they're all gone now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go see this little bendy object here I'm going to hold down left click and I'm going to go to wrap and now that I've got my wrap open I'm just going to hold down left click and drag it onto the null there just like that now it looks a bit warped right now which is it looks pretty stupid just increase the width so they're stuck together now they look stretched so now you just want to increase the radius and right there that looks all right you're gonna spend a lot of time messing around with that if I'm honest but that's basically it there um, 
Now, what I'm going to do is make sure I select the null instead of the wrap. I'm going to click R on my keyboard for rotate, and then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, um, a rotation backwards. So just bring it up a little bit here too as well, and I'm going to press T to toggle the scale of it too, make it a little bit bigger as well. And that's basically going to do it for that there, I reckon. Now, while I'm here, what you can do is you can select like the end, for example, and then control click that end. Make sure you select both of them. We're just going to affect the pink or the blue, for example. And you can just sort of mess around with that letter in particular by itself. And now I can just sort of, you know, rotate it to do whatever I want with it. Um, I'm not going to do too much playing around with that. I'm just going to sort of let it keep its natural flow, but I'm just going to sort of group them a bit more together. Just because with this font, there's a lot of spacing between some of the letters. And I'm going to bring the S in a little bit and back as well. Just like that there. I reckon that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of lighting as well. I'm not going to go too in depth with lighting. I'm just going to show you the basics. So you've got a few different ones here. Uh, the most popular ones by far area light, but you can, this one here just sort of affects, it's just a source of light that affects everything around it no particular direction but area light it basically works as like a panel or a plane and you can just sort of change the length of it as well you can just sort of mess around with it as you please so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a big one up top like that and i'm going to bring one down here as well and you can actually change the power of the light i believe um where would that be intensity just here and I'm just going to copy and paste it and bring it around the other side as well. And just like that. Now, I think this top one, the very first light we added, needs a bit of tweaking. And I think that looks pretty good as well. The E's still pretty dark. I mean, the Z, sorry, not the, not the E. So I'm going to grab that one and just increase it a bit just so it's not so dark over there. Now, just remember, I don't often use this particular render engine, so the text may not look like the best quality, but if you play around with it enough yourself, you'll find different ways to make it look nice as well. Now, basically, I'm just going to click render here. Now, sometimes it's going to be relatively quick depending on the render settings, but since we've added ambient occlusion and stuff like that as well, it's going to take a a few minutes uh, if you don't add those settings it's going to be instant but the quality is not really going to be all there so I'm basically just going to let this run for a second and then I'll have a look at what the text looks like after it's done righty boys so the text is finished rendering uh, that's basically it there that's the finished product the when you put it in Photoshop the background won't be there, it's just black for the sake of you being able to actually see your text. If it was on a white background, it wouldn't con contrast very well. But um, I can see a little bit of warping here, for example, but that's nothing you can't fix in Photoshop. That's only happened because of the wrap sort of plug, uh, not plugin. That, that's only happened because of the wrap I used on the text. So that's basically just something you can fix in Photoshop. Same with this stuff here, but it actually kind of adds a bit of a cool effect to it as well. So I wouldn't even stress about it too much. It does look, it still looks very nice. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. In the future, I plan on doing basically anything that's highly requested. So that's the only reason I really made this tutorial, for example. A lot of people requested it because they're not exactly sure on how to do it themselves. But yeah, all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.